Oh boy, guys, you screwed up. Let me tell you something right now. We give away free stuff all the time on this podcast, and we have a lot of unclaimed prizes, okay? Here's how you check if you win, because the way you win is you leave a comment in the first 24 hours, and if we pick your comment, we will put a comment underneath your comment. We'll reply to your comment and say, you won. If you don't check, you don't get your prize. Make sure you check to see if you won, because we give away stuff all of the time. You got to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you can see these things that are happening. So again, with this episode, which by the way, this is an amazing episode, they all just keep getting better. They really do. Um, we are giving away Maps Aesthetic, okay? So leave a comment, make it a good one. If we pick your comment, we'll comment underneath it. It's a lot of comments there. And then you'll get free access to Maps Aesthetic. Also, we got a huge promotion going on this month. Maps Aesthetic is 50% off. And our Stream Fitness Bundle is 50% off. You can check those out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code MAYSPECIAL with no space for the discount. All right? Enjoy this podcast. Okay, okay, good. Because I'm want to. i just going to come. Hear can anything. I just? Oh, you're you not? Can't? Well, mm -hmm. is your thing dead? Fix your stupid ears then. Or is it plugged in the right? <laughs> is it in the right hole? Again? Oh, Justin, did you? Put, every not, time. The, not the first time he's made yep. this mistake. Remember? No, no, no it's right. Remember his nickname in high school? Yeah. Adam? Wrong hole. Yep. Justin wrong hole. Justin, Just, Andrews. Justin wrong hole. <laughs> that was not. Uh, that was not an alias. I guys. think. So, yeah, I think okay. it was yeah, actually. Well, I think sells. Well, I, I think sells. Okay. He can. Doug's oh. like a tech genius. Watch there this. Boom. Sound. It was literally. Are you good now? Yeah. Blingo, okay. blango, presto, okay. change. Yeah. I don't know where I that probably came stepped from. on it with my, my big Well, what feet. I think happens <clears throat> is that we've been doing some remodeling here and things yep. have been moved around. It looks could you, nice. Could you pull yeah, up uh, before we get, or uh, I don't know if we are going, whatever, but uh, go to Lane Norton's. Can you get the Instagram from your computer, Doug? Yeah, sure can. Go to Instagram, pull up Lane Norton's uh, last post. I believe it's his last post. He, he, he came after uh, uh, Biggest Loser, and I want to address some stuff right now. Okay, so you oh, it's so a lane bio lane, right? Yeah, yeah. Go to bio lane's uh, Instagram. Go to his last post. Is where he is he again angry about something again? What? Did you not something read it? Else? Impossible. Oh, okay. I did read okay, it. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, oh. I, I saw all that. Every, <coughs> yeah, every day he wakes up and he's like, well, here's and he's like, I'm angry. Here's Please. the thing. What am I angry at? I, I want, like I want, I want Doug to read it, read it for us. So I want you to read us the post for the <laughs> listeners that aren't on YouTube. So they, because I know Andrew will show it, but for you, can you read it for our listeners so you can read what he said? Yeah, he said, don't think I've ever told you all this before, but I had a call from a producer of The Biggest Loser about being on the show. During the call, they wanted me to agree that someone could lose 100 pounds in 12 weeks in a healthy way. I refused to agree with it, never got a call back. Hmm. There's more to it. Yeah, slide if over. You, if you slide keep over, slide, keep sliding. Okay. Doug's new Instagram. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he does it from a computer, which is, <laughs> you know, real archaic. Yes. Now, I can't be sure that was the reason they didn't want me, but they pushed hard for me to say it, and I simply wouldn't. To lose 100 pounds in 12 weeks would require employing completely unsustainable methods and would send the wrong message, and that is exactly what I told them. Okay, I'm 100% on board so far. Yeah. Okay, Next do you want slide. me to keep going Yeah, here? yeah, I want, you, I want you to read the whole thing mm -hmm. for the audience. The person who called me also did not seem to understand the difference between someone with a PhD in nutritional sciences and a physical trainer, personal trainer. Anyway, I didn't get on. Probably could have made a lot of money and more fame if I did. Not worth compromising what I believe. I like the, 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 the mild flex there. Oh, I love, the, I, love that too. I love that too. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, so integrity is greater than fame or money. I will find a way to reach millions of people, but not at the expense of doing... What's right? And then he goes in on his. It can now. I'm sorry, I'm making you read all this, but I feel like we need to have the context because I want to have this conversation with the guys. And then he goes on in his caption. He, he, I think he goes on to dig deeper in on the people that decided to go on on this show. <clears throat> okay, many of you guys know that I've been very critical previously about the show and the methodologies they use to get people to lose weight. They encourage unhealthy and unsustainable methods, very very low calories and excessive amounts of exercise. In order for people to lose weight as quickly as possible, because it makes good TV, apparently. However, research has shown that almost every single one of these participants regains nearly all the weight. Moreover, an NIH study demonstrated that they incurred long-term suppression of their metabolic rate five years after the show ended. As I have said, if the methods are unsustainable, the results are unsustainable. In 2019, one of the casting people from the show reached out to me. We had a phone call, and they basically said that they were trying to do the show in a healthier manner. 
which I thought was great. They were interested in having me on the show, but they really pushed hard for me to say that someone could lose 100 pounds in 12 weeks and have it be healthy. I repeatedly stated that while it might not harm the person in the short term, it didn't teach them healthy habits. And it was likely going to lead to massive weight regain after the show. The person also did not seem to understand the difference between a research PhD and a personal trainer. Is it any wonder the average person is so confused about nutrition when the show doesn't even get it? Needless, needless to say, I never got a call back and I can't say for sure it was because I wasn't willing to say that 100 pound weight loss in 12 weeks was okay, but I suspect that was a big part of it. Honestly, it sucked. That would have been a huge opportunity for my business and to take my company to the next level. However, I wouldn't be completely against our mission. It wouldn't, it would have been completely against our mission statement. That is not what at Team BioLane or our nutrition coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach, or our supplement line. <laughs> okay, a lot of a lot things of plugs were there. plugs there. Yeah. 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 Hey, and then he, then he, he goes on to does he go on right here to, to jab any more at the people that chose to be on it or is that it right there? Uh, let me see here. Because um, I know I, that I thought, like in the comments. No, he didn't really say that. anything about the people on the show. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, okay. So truth be told, did I you mean, see the response to Erica Fitlove? Well, uh -huh. I, I did see what she was saying. Now, truth be told, what he's saying is hundred percent accurate. Yeah, it's correct. Hundred percent. It's, it's 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 entertainment, right? So yeah, it would be like making a cop show. Uh, as, as real as possible, or uh, ER, but as real as possible, right? So, mm -hmm. when you're when you're showing people losing weight, if you do it the real way, um, it's a long process. It's not going to be as entertaining. It's not the super high intense, you know, make you cry every single day. Yeah. They're on a production schedule, which yeah. is like they have to accelerate everything, and you know, to try and pretend that that's going to be a healthy practice is just like it's it's just not the case. It's not. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that you, even though Erica's name is not said in this whatsoever, or nor is Steve Cook, although everybody knows that they were the last two trainers on Biggest Loser, she took personal attack from this and wrote a whole po post in response to this. Yeah, about the uh, fitness space being so judgy, you know, mm -hmm. and and you know she 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 tagged us in one of the comments. Yeah, we got tagged. That's the reason why I'm addressing it because we got lumped into this conversation. And in fact, I commented under Lane's thing in my statement. I said that uh, uh, biggest loser has done more harm than good. Change my mind. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all I said because mm -hmm. I. I 100% get behind what Lane says. I agree with what he said. Now, he did kind of attack somebody's integrity that did it. Now, where I'll defend Erica, I know Erica, okay? And she's got a huge heart, and she comes from an incredible good place. Mm -hmm. And I think she just doesn't know better. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think that if you if I go back to my, I don't know what year she is on as far as like how many how many years she's actually been training clients or how many certifications and what her educational background is. But I'm pretty sure it probably looks similar to what mine did for the first couple of years that I was a personal trainer. Yeah. And I wouldn't know any better back then. And yeah, so right. I think that I think that she comes from a good place, but Lane is actually hundred percent correct in this. And I don't know why she decided to to throw you know I don't think he's he's specifically attacking their integrity. He's saying I can't do this because it's against my integrity. So that doesn't necessarily look, here's the deal. If you're uh, there's I, a lot of trainers, by the way, who employ these methods, and it's mm -hmm. not because they have bad integrity, but rather this is the way they think uh, it should be done. So they mm -hmm. see somebody who's obese, and they think all you need is lots of motivation, and I need to hype you up and push you, and you know we're going to make this happen, and it's going to change overnight, and, and that just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It never works. Mm -hmm. So when you learn that, and by the way, it took me a long time to figure that out, so it's not like I knew this right out the gates. Uh, it took me a while. I mean, if I had a client my first five years of, as a trainer who wanted to lose 100 pounds, I would try to get them to lose 100 pounds in, in 12 weeks. And mm -hmm. if I did, I would think it would be a tremendous success. In fact, they'd probably brag about it. Well, later on, you figure out this is a failing strategy. It sets them up for problems in the future. Um, and so I couldn't. Uh, you know, Later on, if you asked me to do something like that, I'd say, I can't. Sorry, it doesn't work. That's not the right way to do it. So I think um, I think Lane actually in the comment section was a little more. She, he didn't name 
anybody. Oh, then he did win into it. But he w- he okay. he was a little more direct about like if you were if you're the type of person that would go on this show, yeah. then you lack integrity, right? That you that you're that, you, and I don't. Which it's harsh to hear that. You well, yeah, know, it stings. It, it stings, and and you know, and he's not wrong. It, it it and again, like to to the point of of not knowing better. Like I think that's a big part of it. And like so, you you see like a Jillian Michaels, or you see a big opportunity where this Hollywood company basically is like offering this this fame, like more notoriety, and oh, it change your whole life. And you you haven't had all the experience to back up, uh, you know, a lot of of your your efforts in terms of training people, coaching people. You're just kind of thrown out there to perform and and be energetic and hyped mm-hmm. and all those types of things. Cause that's what the producer wants you to do. Right. And so I, for the producers, they want that type of person. So they want the new trainer. They want the person that has, you know, is charismatic is, uh, you know, is a character. It's somebody that they can sort of like write out the whole narrative behind like what the totally. show is going to be about. And so it's a little bit predatory on their end, but also too, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand, like there's people in this industry, Industry that have been doing it for decades, it's, and they've they've gone through all these types of clients before. And there's a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom is the key here. Wisdom comes with experience. So yeah. unfortunately, yeah. that is a factor. Yeah, this it's TV. Like if if you watch TV and you anything, I don't care what you're watching on TV. If you're watching TV and you think, oh, this is real, you've been fooled. I don't care if it's a reality show or a drama. The job of the TV, you know, producers is to make it entertaining. And yeah. so if you're picking a trainer for a show, you're looking for what are you looking for? Right? Those all the things that Justin said, uh, charisma, a great backstory. Are they good looking? Are they entertaining? You're not looking for the best trainer. It's that's not what you're looking for because yeah. you, your job is to make a good TV show. Because yeah. it would now, be boring. I mean, now, it'd be a long process. Now here's the deal. Okay, yeah, we could place. Are we going to place blame on the co- on the trainers? Are we going to place blame on the TV producers? You can. I can understand why you would do that. But here's the ultimate blame. The mm-hmm. ultimate blame is consumer, on us. The, yeah, the consumer. Okay, it's, if if consumers get the views, if we didn't watch that kind of stuff. They wouldn't make it. If consumers said, this is unsustainable, yeah. this is not real life, I want to watch something that's real and that's healthy, then they would make something that's real and healthy. This is not the way it works. So it's TV. There's, that's what you can expect from TV. Um, so it's it's not surprising. And I mean, look, we, we've we all talked about that. I mean, if, if, if a show like this came to us, I mean, you know what I would try to do? I would see the opportunity. And my goal would be to convince them. They would never let you. They yeah, I don't know. think it's, they would. It's just like what happened to Lane. Yeah. They would I would hit. be like, hey, this is and what I want to do. Justin, I want to do it this Justin way. Justin hit it right on the head. They they have a narrative. They have a story they want to tell them. There's a right. reason why you you pick the people you pick to be the coaches because they want to tell they want to tell a yeah. story and the, it's not you get to come on and convince them and tell your story yeah, you're not going to change the formula that's made the millions of dollars yeah no they they're not going to do that no. so, and and, to, to, and and that's that and i think that's part of lane's point is that you have to conform but my me defending Erica is that I don't think she know I, she still doesn't know better. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you watch how she trains, she still thinks that it's like you have your way of training, they have their way of training. And we all are disagreeing on things. This like, works for me, right? And that's and I would challenge that. And that's just because you're not there yet. You think because you lost someone thirty or fifty pounds temporarily that you've changed your life? No, you haven't. You have not. You got them to lose 30 or 50 pounds right now. What you didn't do is you didn't give them long-term behaviors. T- check back in with me, those five, those people in five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, because you got them moving like crazy and reducing calories, you got them temporary success. But unless they address the issues why they put that weight back on and you gave them more of a sustainable routine, and the reason why I know that's not what she's giving is because I can see the way she trains herself. Yeah. She still trains like she's on The Biggest Loser. Mm-hmm. Everything's high intensity and moving and, and cardio and super sets and burn 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 yeah. and that's a this, this is a failing this is and we've people that have been in the space like lane or ourselves as long as we have know this is a a long-term failing method maybe short term like lane's point is mm-hmm. yeah but i don't think this is an, an integrity issue i think that she's an amazing person yeah i think she has an incredible heart yeah i think to her she's defense passionate. she's looking at this and saying we're helping these people right. they're gonna lose weight and it worked for me and here's a deal if you look at people who employ these strategies to lose a lot of weight, you're going to look at probably close to a 90 or 95% fail rate, right? But that means there's a 5 to 10% 
quote unquote success rate and success as measured by someone who has maintained the weight loss for let's say five to 10 years. That's typically how they, how they count it, right? So they're not looking at lifetime. It's like when you look at uh, cancer survival, they say five years, they don't look at 15 or 20. It's about five to 10 years that they'll look at this. Now, how do those people five to 10 years later keep the weight off employing these methods? It is fanatical and it is not something that most people want to do. In fact, the, the, in, the fanaticism that allows you to keep beating the shit out of your body and restricting yourself, I would argue is unhealthy. So uh, it's failing across the board. It's not a, a successful strategy across the board. Definitely not for the 90% of the people who end up gaining the weight back, but also for the 5 to 10% who figure out a way to make themselves so fanatical about what they're doing and beating themselves up. That's also failing. What you see with those people, by the way, is a lot of hormone issues. You see lots of stress. You see lots of uh, their, their issues with food turn into issues with other things. You sometimes see injuries and, and problems along those lines. By the way, I want to be very clear. Um, I know we sound very like, we could sound very judgy right now. Look, nobody's perfect. Um, you know, no, everybody does something wrong or whatever. Dude, Lane, not- Lane, it hurt. How many times has Lane hurt his back doing the same shit over and over again, right? So yeah. he didn't know any better either, although he's trying to do his best. He's, he had to figure out later on, oh, mobility is very important. So, and I've had those issues myself. So nobody's perfect, mm-hmm. but this one for us is, is quite clear because this is, the, this is what I worked on for literally two decades because you got to consider the average person that we trained over two decades you know, is the person that it's wants all, to lose it's weight. It's also very misleading when you're the trainer because you think that you're having success mm-hmm. because your clients are telling you how much they love you mm-hmm. and they've and that you are getting them on the scale and they're down 20 pounds and they and you you're high fiving each other and you're you're celebrating what you think is success and it is success. It's just temporary success and it's not done the correct way because what eventually ends up happening is eighty five percent of those people put all that weight back on because of the methods that you chose to get there. It, I mean, and the way why this isn't judgy. This is uh, exactly what I talk about. I was as a trainer. Mm-hmm. I know I'm guilty of this. I didn't know any better. If you were to ask somebody who I train in years one through three. They would tell you I was a phenomenal trainer. Mm -hmm. They loved me. I had a great personality. I was positive, full of motivation. I answered the questions they asked me. I pushed them through their workouts. But then you asked them, did you keep the weight off? That's right. And so it it was a- You do all the follow-ups. It was a major check-in with myself five years later when I'm looking at the trophies, the accolades, and people telling me how great I am and me really going like, man, okay, at this point in my career, I know I've, I've definitely trained a few hundred people where are they all at today? It's, it's and such when it, an uphill battle. And when the percentage is less than 10% of them have really fundamentally changed their life forever, mm-hmm. not temporarily, not for a good run for six months to a year, but forever, I had to say, man, there's not a lot. Most of them depend on me and my motivation to keep that weight off or keep them in shape. And that's because... I was employing the wrong things early on and I didn't know any better. It wasn't a lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that I was manipulating these people. I don't think she's doing that either. I just think she doesn't know any better. And then you get someone like Lane who just loves to fucking attack shit like that. Just loves to like beat somebody up. It's it's an uphill battle in the fitness and health space, right? We've been, we've been pushed this kind of false paradigm of weight loss now for a very, very long time. And then on top of it, if you're somebody who, you know, wants to lose 75 pounds or 80 pounds or 60 pounds even, during the period of time that you've gained that weight, at some point you've kind of turned off your awareness around it, right? Because you, you don't want to face the the music. You don't really face the reality that, man, I am not taking care of myself or, man, this is becoming an issue. But then at some point, 80 pounds later, you have this kind of realization or this awareness. And you're like, I got to do something about this. And then this happens you become impatient. I need to do something about it now. I want this weight gone now. That's it. I want to change now. Now you go to the trainer who says, okay, it's going to take us two years to do this. It's a long process. We're dealing with deep seated, seated issues. This is, we're going to have to develop skills like discipline. We're going to have to develop a sustainable routine. Then you go to the other trainer that goes, you listen, you do what I say in three months, it'll be gone. Mm-hmm. Who, who are you going to go to? Right? You're now finally in this place where you're like, I want this weight gone. I can't believe I've done this to myself. You want it gone in three months. You don't want to do a two-year-long process. The people who tend to go to the two-year-long process, the people that have tried the three-month, you know, uh, solution and failed three, four, five. You know how many times? How many times have you gotten clients who want to lose thirty pounds and they've lost that same thirty pounds 
four times right. before. Mm-hmm. A good chunk. It's almost mm-hmm. never the first time, by the way, that they come to us, you know? I think, well, and I think, too, just, uh, and I was trying to think about this, because I do, like, I care for people like this that really have a big heart about, like, changing lives and, you know, doing better and doing big things. Um, the, the thing is, once you get to a point where you get, you know, a lot more attention, you get a lot more people listening, a lot of like America, everybody's like buying into your methods. Like you really have to check yourself. You have to be open to criticism. You have to, you have to be open to educating yourself even further. You can't just stop there. Right. It, just because you think it, it works in a certain direction in terms of losing weight, you know, you have to play that all the way out and see how this, you know, rolls all the way out and then be receptive and, and be receptive to change. And so I just, I, I like I, I'm kind of I'm sick of this whole thing of like, uh, you, you know, like it, like feelings are 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 the standard now. Like like <laughs> feelings it, because if I feel this way, it's right. It's not right. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you, you know you have to deal with that. Yeah. If it's not right, it's not right. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, but you know, you're, it's easier said than done, right? You're talking of about of course. You're talking about like you've built this identity that now is your success, and now you have to say, hey. That was wrong. Like, that's a really tough thing to do. Um, it's you, a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, you identify I wish, I, very strongly with it. It's brought you lots of success. You've gotten lots of people. I to, wish I wish that Erica would have left it alone because it, it, Lane didn't call her, her out. Yeah, and we never were judging. Yeah, like, and it, definitely not personally. us. So, I mean, we got nothing but love for yeah. her. I mean, we've anytime her, her name ever comes up out of one of our mouths on this show, I think we speak highly and respectful for her. Listen, man, yeah. she was, she's, I mean, how that's not fair for me to, to judge her as a trainer and she's on year, what, two or three or four, four where she's at we're 20 years deep come on right i mean if if, here's the other thing i have to ask myself if if someone came to me 23 year old me and said we we love you and your clients love you and you have we want to put you on tv we want to put you on tv you're gonna get people to lose weight yeah i'm I'm, you know i know where i was at 20 years i'm just starting to take off in life and that opportunity i would see dollar signs and opportunity think about it this way let's say that happened right let's put ourselves in those shoes right 23 year old us we get approached by nbc Come on the show. You're phenomenal. It'd be the most exciting thing you, you that's get to, to us. You get to help these people. You become successful. You become yeah. famous as a result. Would you have ever later on reevaluated your methods? Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. It would have it would have been very challenging. Mm-hmm. Even now, and, and you know, late much later, 20 years later, almost 20 years later, I don't think I would have looked back or or, or looked at myself and said, Oh man, that was a well, I because that's who you become. At my, at the way I used to train people like, you know, five, six years ago, even. You mm-hmm. know, like there's some things that I did that I'm like, ah. Like, why was I subscribing to that? Yeah. But but that's just the You're thing. You're talking about those naked workouts? Yeah, the naked <laughs> workouts. Like, why yeah. did I do that? You burn more calories. Well, I, I think that's also the, you know, to your point, Justin, this this is the hard part of when you when you become so famous, like on t- from TV or social media, and I mean, you're drinking your own Kool-Aid. Exactly. You know, who's going to tell me? And then it turns into, and that's what's unfortunate. Who's going to be the voice of reason for you? What's unfortunate about the, the messages be- between both, you know, Lane and her back and forth is that it, it's, it turned into all of a sudden, uh, we get, there's different ideologies out there. And it's like, well, no, this is where I'm going to support Lane. Like, there's right ways to do things and there's wrong ways to yeah, do things. Yeah, there is no, yes. it's not subjective. This yes. is not an opinion thing. Yeah, it's exactly. No. It's not an opinion. It's not of like, oh, we we are all both, help, we're all helping people. You help people your way. I help people my way. It's like, no, there's actually a clear difference here. You think you're helping people. You're helping people temporarily. You're not actually changing their behaviors long yeah. term. And you won't know that. And so you've been in this game long enough this to is see a, that. This is yeah. just an extreme example of this this fitness paradigm that has been pushed for so long, which is burn as many calories as you can while you're working out. That's what's important. And then eat as little as possible because that's what gets the weight loss. Therefore, that's what's going to solve uh, your problem. And it's actually super false. In fact, you know, it's funny. So yesterday I was in LA, right? And I, it, I, I was on a couple podcasts down there. And right before I got on Max's podcast, he was interviewing me about the book. So I was looking up more new studies on resistance training because I wanted to bring up some new fresh stuff that I had found. And I found a study, um, this is a a newer one I wasn't familiar with, that showed that muscle has a protective effect in terms of insulin sensitivity and, and protective against diabetes on your body regardless of body fat, okay? In other words, you take someone who's really obese, mm-hmm. you have them build muscle, they now have a more protective effect 
against the ravages of diabetes or they have better insulin sensitivity as a mm -hmm. result. So regardless of how much you weigh... Now, is that just simply metabolically? Because now yes. they have more muscle, yes. their body requires more calories, therefore you can almost guarantee that an X amount more calories are going to get partitioned well, to, to keep the Not muscle. just that, right? Muscle is a, a, a one way your body stores glycogen and utilizes glucose. And it's very... It, it improves insulin sensitivity. L being weak and having little muscle is very strongly connected to developing issues with diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia, all the issues that develop from having insulin uh, issues. So muscle is protective no matter what. Now, why am I saying this? Because if you're following the old fake uh, wrong fitness paradigm like they do on, on Biggest Loser, you know what's happening to all those obese people? They ain't building muscle. They're losing everything. Mm -hmm, They're right. losing everything. Are they healthier? Maybe a little bit. In the long term, are they healthier? No. They're not. They're smaller versions of themselves, but they're not that much healthier, especially when they gain the weight back because typically when you lose the muscle and the fat, so you lose a bunch of weight, but you lose muscle with it, and then you gain the weight back, you don't gain the muscle back. You now gain the fat back. So the guy who lost 100 pounds, who ends up gaining 100 pounds again, he ends up gaining 100 pounds of pure body fat and none of the muscle that he lost. That's I mean, mm -hmm. part of this this issue is that people don't grasp this, right? If if you do weight, just because you lift weights, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to build muscle. No, resistance training, the way that I talk about it in the book, is, is not just using resistance, okay? Running uses resistance, the resistance of my body, right, with gravity. I could use dumbbells and barbells uh, in, in, in workouts. That doesn't make it resistance training. What makes it resistance training is you're using resistance in a way specifically programmed to build strength and build muscle. That's it, right? So I could give someone a pair of dumbbells and barbells and give them a pure cardio workout. No problem. It is not resistance training. Just because you're using weights doesn't make it resistance training. Because, again, you watch The Biggest Loser, and they are using weights, but they're not doing resistance training. No, the, the Biggest Loser, Shay. What are you thinking right now? You're thinking, what the f have I done, aren't you, Shay? Six, five, Danny, let go. Shay, get the f up. Those people are not, and here, if there's any muscle built in those people whatsoever, it's purely out of the novelty side of it because they haven't touched anything whatsoever. But the likelihood that you're going to be in a calorie restricted diet, you're going to be doing Severe. doing mm -hmm. cardio plus Strong. doing cardio with weights, and what we call cardio with weights is all those superset exercises where you're doing lunges to a bicep curl to a shoulder press to a side lunge. There's no rest. So yeah, that that is cardio, and just because you're holding on to weights. You does not mean you get to build muscle. It doesn't work that way. If you're not giving it the building blocks calorie wise, you're not giving yourself adequate rest. You are doing calorie or you're doing cardio in a calorie restricted place. You're going to not only lose fat, you're going to lose muscle yeah, too. Yeah, and, and again, the big problem if you look at the, the you know these these modern uh, and by the way, that's science. That's not a this is not a, an ideology methodology no. type of debate here. That's how it works. That's right. Yeah. That's right. If you if you look at you know our problems right now, our health problems right now, really what they stem from. I know people say it's inactivity. Mm -hmm. To some extent, it is, but to a larger extent, it's that we're weak. We're weak, and we have little muscle. You don't believe – if people who are like, nah, that's not true. No, mm -hmm. it's true. You know, you know, they do studies on college kids. They've done these studies with college kids where they have them just test their grip. These are guys in their 20s, and their strength is, I think, like 40% weaker than guys in their 80s when they were squeezing, doing the wow. same grip test. We're just weak. And yeah. what happens when you don't give your body a reason to have strength and have muscles, your body gets rid of it. Yeah. Your body's never stronger than it needs to be. I promise you, it's only as strong as it thinks it needs to be. If you sit in a chair all day long, your body will adapt so that that's about yeah, as strong as you It adapts to the are. environment that you present it continually. Yeah. So you know, that's that's what you always have to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah. So you just got a weak body with uh, with very little protection against the, the ravages of lots of food and, and, and modern life. Well, I feel like a lot of this, I mean, this is really what, you, the resistance training revolution is all about it. Totally. I mean, this right. is what you address. We need to change the conversation. The, the conversation's wrong. I would mm -hmm. love to see, I don't, and I don't know if this will ever exist, but I'd love to see a show where that's what they're focusing on. Hey, I'm here. I need to lose 100 pounds. No problem, Mrs. Johnson. We're going to get you strong. Never. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you really Never. strong. Never. I'm going to get you a deadlift. I'm going to get you. Never. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not entertaining enough, mm -hmm. you know? It's, I mean, it's a, and, and to be honest with you, when I remember that I, I actually watched Biggest Loser when it first, when it, the first couple seasons were actually pretty good. It, what happened was it became a game. Mm -hmm. 
and it came all it became all about manipulating the scale. Well, that's what got the ratings, isn't yeah. it? It's, and that's what got all the ratings was the drama behind the scenes. So the change the show evolved. So if you've been watching since I've watched since the very beginning, it was a twenty four fitness. I think was a part of the original. Uh, they did. Or they, was that later? They did. It was late. A little bit later. They remember when they did the, uh, which is ironic. You know, shame on twenty four fitness for doing this. I mean, they after the Biggest Loser. They had the, there was a huge surge in circuit training again. So curves oh, did it originally, right? Then they put that uh, that's right. circuit in the that's front. That's right, of the and that was all part of it. Was a, what was it called the flex zone or flex the, zone. some yeah. shit? Consumer like demand. There that's it is. Right, that's right. And so they put it in there. And I remember at that point in my career, I'd already known this is not the way. And so I remember being really frustrated as a manager when I was getting. Uh, getting message emails from from upper management saying that my trainers needed to coach people through it and take people down. I'm like, fuck that. No way. I'm going to let my trainers do that. Such we a I, you were such a waste of time. I know. I was a, <laughs> the upper a, management loved and hated <laughs> you. But he makes us so much money. I know, that's right. Like, but he doesn't want to do what we do with How about I just hit goal? You guys let me run this you place. Fire well, I'm, you fire that's, You know, that's why you never got fired, right? It's because yeah. you just crushed. Well, that was the, I mean, I, remember, <laughs> I was told that early on, right? I, I remember having mentors that had been in the space before me and said, listen, Adam, if you don't like what they're telling you, you don't want to do the things they're doing, then you just you crush goal. You crush goal, and they'll leave you alone. Yeah. So and that was me too. Yeah, <laughs> same, <laughs> same thing. Crush goal and run it the way you want to run it. That's you know? hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I, I wanted to talk yes, about yesterday again because I, I did go see Max and, and Jen Cohen. So Max, uh, Max Lugavere, one of my favorite people in the world. I'll tell you what, man. I wish I had a sister that I could hook him <laughs> up with. I swear to God, I love yeah. this guy so much. He's such a great guy. But he's like this eternal bachelor. It's mm. it's so funny, right? So he's obviously good looking, smart guy, very successful, but uh, he's just this this bachelor that it's funny. We were hanging out afterwards, and he's like, "Man, he goes, I don't, I just, I have issues with commitment. I just can't." Mm. I'm like, "Bro, you're getting like so many girls are probably throwing themselves at you because you're so you got all these, you're checking all the boxes. You're oh, a great a, guy, whatever. Yeah, good looking, successful guy, oh, super nice. Oh, he's swimming in the tang. He's yeah. just, he's you know, doing himself. <laughs> and so I'm like, I mean, it's hard to make a commitment when, you know, you just take some laps. You gotta, you know, you need a snorkel <laughs> because it's just, you're drowning, you know? Now off air, do you, have you talked to him now? Has he always been that way or was he a little more socially awkward and quiet kid growing up and then he's he's blossomed into this you know he, he's famous it's, guy it's here. not that he's that he's he's not he's he's definitely the he's definitely nerdy right but he's confident in his mm -hmm. in his nerdiness which is what he's makes got a him, lot of charisma though that's what makes him yeah. charismatic right yeah, so yeah. i mean i love the guy i mean him and i can i can hang out with that guy forever and have great conversations. So, but yeah, so he's like, man, I've got these. And I'm like, listen, you're looking in the wrong places. First of all, you live in LA. So I'm pretty sure you're not going to find, you know, yeah, the person you want to settle down that's with. That's a tough one. Here, I said, they're so, you know, people are throwing themselves at you left and right. They insult I'm, all the women in LA right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> whatever, so. Yeah. Yeah, just, well, I mean, I'm sure, I know there's good, you know, whatever. Lucky to have me. But, you know, there's that whole scene down there, right? Especially where, you know, where he's. You to just live don't like LA and the vibe. I get it. You know yeah, what I'm well, saying? I mean, there's good people down there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I go down there quite a bit. But yeah, it's a and you know, we're having that conversation, but he's, you know, I went and his, he's got his new recording studio. Oh, so is that at his place, at like his place, at his yeah. apartment? Yeah, great so place. Yeah, yeah, we went in there, we, we hung out a little bit, and his, it, and he's such a bachelor, right? You go into his place, it's nice, but you could tell, like, he's just a dude that lives there. So he's got like one guitar hanging out over here, another guy. You know, he sings. Do you guys know that, dude? So you showed me he had an album. I yeah, had no dude. idea. Is that real or is that was yeah, a joke? No, that's real. That's dude. real. I'm yeah. actually jealous. I'm no, like, he oh, sounds. Man, that's awesome. He sounds good too. Is it? Where can we find it? Can I don't get... know. I don't. I think you'd have to go on his Instagram. Oh, I'm so gonna blow okay. him up, dude. I'm at gonna, the end I'm of this, sharing. Andrew, you got to play at least like a bit of that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, so yeah, he's Max. Yeah, little Max. I love you. Don't you cry. Love don't cry on and on and we run to yes. We need to be inspired. And then his kitchen is like just full of all these supplements and you know, because companies send him stuff all the time. So I'm uh -huh. like, I'm in heaven, right? So I'm walking through looking at I open one drawer. So he works for Paleo Valley like we do. Yeah. I open one drawer and it's literally meat sticks. And I mean there's probably, I don't know, five hundred Meat oh, sticks in there. Dude. And he's like, hey, you know, you can have some if you, you want. You can't have <laughs> enough. You, you won't even Let's notice honest, if yeah. I take a couple of these. Do you know they've doubled in size this last year? Paleo? Wow. Yeah, I was actually talking to Shauna uh, yesterday. She actually sent me a really nice oh, message. Ever since they started working with us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, you know, I tell you what. So I, my... Um, my cousin, he sent me over. He, he sent me over a, a picture of the uh, what's that other brand? Epic beef jerky. Yeah. Uh -huh. He goes, hey, what do you think of these? And I'm like, ah. I said that was a company we talked to for a little bit. We did, we didn't want to work with them. I was like, bro, have you not had Paleo Valley? And he's like, no, never heard of them. So I had a, I, yeah, Sean they're, they're actually amazing. sent him over a package, which I thought was really cool. And uh, I 
they just they clown on everybody. Mm -hmm. The I have never had bro. I love that grass. Word. We got to bring that back. Yeah, clown, clown, clown yeah. on. It. I love that. I mean, grass fed beef jerky is tough to make taste really, really good. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so and stay moist. And, and it, yeah, not to like shit on all those other brands because I think that's just a tough task. I think it's yeah. tough to get grass fed beef jerky to taste really, really good. Peo Valley nailed that one. Yeah, it's they, so funny. I was walking, so I was walking to the studio yesterday and uh, our neighbors here, so I, you guys know we have like a tattoo place like above the stairs and all that and they're outside and I was just walking up and they're like, Beef stick guy, and I'm like, beef what? Guy. They didn't even recognize you from Mind Pump, just from the beef stick no. commercial. Oh, <laughs> the beef stick commercial. And uh -oh. I was like, because they're running it right now, and it's it's on a lot of people Instagram. Oh, hey, are you looking for a great protein snack on the go that's not gonna leave you that instant feeling of regret? Try Paleo Valley beef sticks. Paleo Valley beef sticks are farm raised, made with 100% grass fed, grass finished beef, loaded with all the daily vitamins and nutrients your body needs to shine. Here at Paleo Valley, we prioritize health over profit, have a serious passion for environmental restoration and animal welfare. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Consider a higher quality protein snack you'll actually feel good about. Damn, that's good. Paleo Valley, because quality matters. And oh wow that's Facebook. so wild and so i was like oh that's that's so weird you know like but i was like cool yeah <laughs> beef yeah. stick guy yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> paleo valley yeah. hey he's uh he's, he's outgrowing us adam i yeah. know Gosh, I see you damn. both are well, i'm gonna be all by yeah, myself you, talking, you with, yeah you big timing no. us with the book over never, here never. justin <laughs> with the commercials <laughs> i'm the most loyal guy oh, I'll ever man i gotta get I something going on for myself i know i know how failure i'd be by myself yeah uh jen then i met with jen right jen all right yeah she's gotta be the like the like the I don't. I can't. I don't. I can't even figure out the word. She's such a. She's such a closer. Like yeah. she can work, meet people, connect with people, and get shit done. Like I think nobody she, I've ever met in my I, entire life. I disagree. I think she's a female version of us. She's just been in L.A. Maybe you stick me in I L.A. I don't know, dude. Yeah. She's fire, bro. You got to hear how her, her talk. She's so charismatic and so likable. Well, I watched her TED talk, and it was her whole thing about being bold. And like, that's her, you know. So and I and I kind of get that in terms of her just like totally going for it oh, you know like with everything i mean look at her podcast like where, where it's gone from when she started she's yeah. got like these huge celebrities well, on no, there. she came in and saw us then i remember having i talked to her for like two hours afterwards and she's like you know what and i remember her like what do you think i should name it and she's like throwing names out there like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go back home when i get home i'm doing this and then she like, did yeah yeah and yeah. called yeah. me a one lot more. of people say that and then they don't follow up yeah, yeah. and it's yeah so she's one of those guys. and then she it, did it and then she killed it you know yeah. what i'm saying killed she's, it yeah, yeah and yeah. she's really really good at conversation very good interview it's funny i did her podcast right and so she read my book and then we're doing the thing and she goes i feel like you were kind of calling me out during the whole book i'm like what do you mean she's like i was <laughs> the cardio maniac mm. i'm the person you talk about in the book and she's like and it's it's causing problems she's like my ankles mm. bothering me my hips bothering me she's like i'm trying to lift more weights and she goes but i have this problem which is hilarious cuz when we were there there was a, a a production staff from one of the companies that she's working with so there was like a bunch of guys there and other people working so she's telling me this and they're kind of listening in and she goes, and now I have this issue. She's like, my butt is just, it's, it's, it's big now. It's too big. She's like, I, I need it to shrink. And I'm looking, and the guys are looking at me like, and I'm looking at them like, do you know how many people trying to grow their butt? Are you crazy? Yeah, right. Say, how do yeah. I shrink my butt? I'm like, I don't know. Stop uh, moving. That's a great commercial for us. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm like, really? Yeah. Oh, what's, man. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Who you wants know, to shrink their butt? Grew your butt too big. Talking about Jen Cohen, I love her, right? And she, so uh, right now I'm uh, a mentor like my cousin. I have a cousin that's like, and she, he's not like young anymore. He's a, I've been mentoring him since he was like 17, 18 years old. He's now 30 plus and he's uh, very, very successful. But he's found himself in this, in this like, range and I don't want to put his business as far as his finances out in the like everybody's but let's he's deep into six figures and he's trying to, to move out of that and he's like overwhelmed with stuff and the the conversation we had a really long conversation and it reminds me of, of, of something that I think Jennifer is has a major strength it reminds me of what I think has attributed to a lot of success with mind pump we don't talk about it very much on the show 
but how important uh, relationship building is totally. mm-hmm. in the pursuit of scaling something to that magnitude, right? Yeah. Like doing it on your own is uh, <clears throat> you're you're either gonna drive yourself on the ground and, or it's not gonna happen. Well, and, too, and, and to give and, and I I know we brought this up a long time ago, but I don't think people realize like how we addressed that initially and like what you did with spreadsheets and and follow ups and you know like making sure like we're giving things back to some of our our friends to make sure that relationship is still you know active and alive and so there's a lot of work that goes into that yeah i learned this like pretty early on in my career um how valuable it was and so obviously when we came into this business it was something that i was prepared for that we needed to and it got so overwhelming with the amount of relationships that we built that you know we've employed people to help me with that and to keep me organized and really the the idea behind it is like these people that you meet you have to you have to go with it with uh, I want to add value to their life and you're not looking for anything That's in return. It. Yeah. You can't, it's not like, oh, if I do this for mind pump guys, maybe they'll do this for me. It's like, no, like I really like these guys. I really like what they stand for. So I'm just going to be a good person to them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like when you talk about people like Max Lugavere and the thing like we did for his mother when she passed, right? Mm-hmm. And we sent her, or before she passed, we sent her over Yeah, that book. wasn't, a, that wasn't, we weren't thinking that was a business. No, thing. it was, was never. Just a, you know, you're doing something for a, a person. That That's you, right. We met him. We like him. We care about him as a person. He's a good dude. And so we, we, you make mental note of that. And when you, when you live your life that way, where you're, you're trying to do for others and help other people, it's got this unbelievable compounding effect down the road, but it's not an instant thing. You know what the irony of that is, Adam, is that if you're doing it for the reason of getting the compounding effect back, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. work. No, it has to be You have to be genuine about it. Isn't that strange? You have to be, you have to be genuine and care about other people and wanting to do good things for other people. Mm -hmm. And if you lead with that and you're always leading with that, eventually it does come around full circle and it's an amazing, and and I feel like Jennifer Cohen's an example of that. She is. She's somebody who does, she's in LA where she's, there's a lot of people that are trying to build things and do things. It's a, it's like the hub for California as far as, you know, uh, what we do, right? So in in entertainment business and tech and podcasting and YouTube, and she's done it, obviously done an incredible job since she started with building relationships Mm -hmm. and she's likable. Right, I mean, we that's how we built a relationship. We met. Her. Matter of fact, I remember we almost didn't have her on the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. we were. Ah, I don't know about this girl. It doesn't sound like it's kind of our style. This and that. Well, let's meet. We meet her, and what happens? Yeah, we loved her. We loved her. We really like her. She built a great relationship with her. So, I mean, I can't stress that enough. Like how important that is in business and scaling and growing because you'll eventually reach a ceiling by yourself. And this is what I said to my cousin. I said, if you're happy where you're at, you did it, man. You did a great job. You're an entrepreneur. You're making deep six figures. You got freedom to come and go as you please. You could take days off. You could travel. You do whatever you want. Like, but I know he has aspirations to go beyond that. And I said, you're at a you're at a sticking point. And you think it's all these little things that are falling out of place or because you were late to this. Like, nah, dude, you are personally spread so thin that you've reached you've reached your ceiling. And until you've you've learned to bring other people on that you can then rely on, mm-hmm. you won't break past you that. You know what's the beauty of that? And that's very true. Mm-hmm. The beauty of that is in a in, in, in capitalism, real capitalism, not fake capitalism, or real capitalism, in order to succeed, you have to give other people what they want. You can't succeed any other way. Now, of course, there's, you know, where you can work in government where you force people to give you money. You could do, ba- you know, behind the scenes deals and be crooked. But in real capitalism, you're not going to become a successful millionaire or even especially billionaire if people hate you. If everybody hates you, nobody wants to work with you, nobody wants your products, you're not providing anybody value, it ain't going to happen. So you can be as greedy as you fucking want to be, but the only way you're going to get what you want is by giving other people what they want. This is a wonderful protection mechanism. It's actually, so people are just talking about we all need to work together. Everybody needs to work together. That's what happens. People voluntarily work together, and sure, oftentimes it's in their own self interest, but they have to give other people what they want. Otherwise, they're not going to become. Now you hit you Mm -hmm. hit uh, Max up, you hit Jen up, and then you and you did all this in a day in L.A. You flew back. What was traveling like right now? Oh man. Oh, you know, I haven't traveled since the whole COVID thing. I know that's kind of weird. 
What was it like for you? It's just weird. Everybody's with their mask, and it's kind of you know they have the seats kind of uh, partitions off, partitioned off in the airport. And oh, they did because the last time I flew, it was like it felt like every seat was packed. No, I'm the like, airplane Whoa. it was, okay. but I'm talking about in the airport. Oh, in the it airport, wasn't. Yeah, but yeah. did it feel like it was uh, dead in there, or did it feel no, weird? no? Because LAX is crazy. No, 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 no. It was it was popping, but it was late because the last. The only flight available for me was uh, I, I left. The, I mean, we took off at like almost ten o'clock. Oh wow! From, yeah, so I was and I had gotten up at five a.m. that morning. Oh, that's a long day. Yeah. So and then I, you know, so I was prepared, right? So I knew this would kind of happen. I thought, all right, you know, because there were two flights. Either I made the five p.m. one or the one that was at nine thirty. I, I heard you. I, did you know that uh, our team uh, knew better and and actually booked you the old? The, uh, the, of course. The, yeah. yeah. Because I'm like, okay, maybe <laughs> I'll make guy, the five. This guy's like, I'm gonna make. This guy tells tells Katrina and Jerry that he's gonna make. He's gonna make the five. He's gonna make flight. five o'clock. He's got two things he's gonna do in different locations in L. A. Giving himself a two hour window. No way. And when, it's two hours in dude, between any spot. In when LA. when Katrina yeah. told me that, I started laughing. I'm like, Sal told you he would make five. He knows better. Him yeah, and yeah. I have been down there so LA's many times. I right hey look, you know, sometimes stupid, you gotta dream, dude. Because I'm like. Oh, you know, like, maybe there's not traffic anymore, well, dude. Right? I'm gonna. That means I'm gonna get home by the time I'm, I get home. It's never like bed, that down there. It's midnight. I got a baby, right? Yeah. So he's not gonna. You know, that's really where you're at. Your oh. head was at. I went. I, well, I want to be home. At. home. Oh, yeah. I'm fucked. I was gonna be screwed. And so I prepared. So I had my. You know, I had my headphones that do the, the noise canceling. Your I had my brain Fe FM. My free, yeah, I have brain FM. I had the Felix Gray glasses. As soon as I got to the airport, actually, as soon as I got in the Uber, yeah. put them on so that my brain could at least be ready for sleep. By the time I got home, because I was already hyped, right? I'm hyped from all these podcasts. I'm That's hyped hard. From all, and I'm like, oh, man, oh, and the yeah. bright lights in the in the, in the the airport and the plane. Oh, I know. So I had my Felix Trays on the whole time. It definitely helped. So by the time I got home, I was able to go to sleep. But then, of course, my son decides to have one of those rough nights. So. <laughs> oh, and my man. wife, she does, <sighs> she really, really tries to, you know, kind of shield yeah. me to help me sleep. But I mean, I'm gonna wake up, right? Because he's crying or whatever. So I'm in and out. It's always when night. you're at your most vulnerable. Oh, you know? dude! Like when you're having the roughest days. When they <laughs> they like to challenge. Dude, I'm so tired. Now you have it. a you have a spare room, so you don't. Do you get up and go over there like when that happens, or it, it, like especially it, on a night like that? Or no? well, I mean, okay, let's say I do do that, right? It means I got up and right. had to go somewhere else, and now I've broken up my sleep, and it's not like I'm getting tons of sleep anyway, because I still got to wake up in the morning to get ready and then come. I mean, here. that's my routine right now at five o'clock. It's actually one of the cutest things in the world, though, to see because. Uh, I hear him first. He's he's waking up around five a.m. right now, especially when he goes down at seven or seven thirty. He wakes up about five. Sometimes we, we're lucky five thirty, but even sometimes four thirty. Like he'll get up early. Um, but what he does is he wakes up. Katrina gives him a little bit of milk, and he falls back to sleep with her in the bed right away. Like he mm -hmm. just takes his like he's waking up hungry probably. Mm -hmm. Gets a little bit of milk, crashes right back with her, and they and they sleep. But the irony is, if I'm in the bed. He doesn't go back to sleep. That's because you're the play. You're the fun house. guy. Yes, he sees yeah. that. And you know, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I play this game with him where I pretend like I'm snoring. It was like one of the cutest things ever. Like now, so so I'll like we'll be read like when we read uh, during his uh, before bath time, right? And I'm I'm reading before he goes to bed. Um, after we're like done reading a few books, I'll like, like trying to get him ready for bed. I'll roll over and be like, "Oh, it's time to go to bed. Dad's sleeping," and I'll pretend like I'm snoring. And I've done it so many times now that he does it now. He just pretends like he's snoring. And then he comes over, <laughs> he wakes me up, and then I, I act like I'm all startled. Well, I totally fucked myself because I've trained him this way. So oh, when I'm no. actually really sleeping, he's going to be slapping me in the face and he's laughing because <laughs> he thinks I'm playing. Oh, he yeah. thinks I'm playing with and him. you're such a bear when you wake I up. I know, hilarious. dude. So, uh, so yeah, I climb. When he gets up or when I hear him crying and waking up, Katrina gets up, I get up. Katrina goes downstairs to get the milk. I go in the spare room. And I go sleep in there. That way, everybody can sleep for another two hours because if I'm in the bed, he gets up and he wants to play the entire morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, man. that's my, that's so, same thing. So it's funny, right? Because your kids will associate one parent with one thing. So if he's stirring, she can't go in there and just calm him down by putting her hand on him because he either smells her or knows it's her and he mm. knows she's got milk. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm not going back to sleep. But if I do it, Sometimes he'll go back to sleep because dad ain't got no milk. So he's like, I guess I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, dad that, ain't got no milk. that, you know, each parent kind of represents something yeah. different, right? For your kid. There's a, a thing on TikTok that's going viral right now. And I, I can't wait to go home and just try it and see what happens. 
Oh, so he, when you run? Yes. Okay. So both, par pa both parents I've hold the that. kid's hand. And my son's age is probably perfect age to do this mm -hmm. at. So somewhere between, you know, once they're walking, right? So one to two years old, somewhere in there. And you're each holding their hand. And then you have somebody like across the way. So let's say uh, Katrina and I are over there with Max. And I'm videoing or someone else is videoing it. And then we both let go of Max's hand and run opposite directions. See who he follows? Yeah. Uh, and that's like a TikTok thing right now to see which way. And the one I saw was dad all three times. Mm -hmm. And they even switch what side the kid they're holding on and the, and it was so funny because the kid runs the dad first two times right away to the left and they're like okay let's switch let's put dad on the right and so the kid initially starts to run the left and then realizes he's running towards mom yeah. and then runs the other direction towards uh, dad you know you know they have to do another experiment though like have them like scrape their arm or something and then see which so okay so this yeah. is why i brought this up so this happened yesterday so i'm playing because i totally think that max would come my way it's like protective or fun i'm that person mm. i'm hurt okay so him and i are wrestling around on the the beanbag and he's getting you know more you know uh what's the risky or whatever that you know he's at that age yeah. now or he's taking a lot more he's, he's courageous yeah courageous right so he's you know walking along the edge of that you know those beanbags are tall mm -hmm. and he falls off hits his head on the wall and falls on the ground i mean definitely loud cried right away katrina comes running down the stairs and i'm like and she's like what happened what happened like, he's okay he just fell down he's all right he's all right i got him. and i'm like trying to hold him and, and hey it's okay son i'm kissing him on his head and stuff like that and he sees his mom and he's like oh. yeah, uh -huh. yeah. and i'm like oh wow and so he totally is like yeah, mom's home base yeah mom is mom is food and i don't feel good yeah. like i yeah. lose every time dad is fun time yeah yeah Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Before we continue, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have a lot of them there. We wrote them ourselves. They're very, very good against mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Michelle Ailan. Can you build muscle strength and muscle endurance at the same time or in the same programming? Yeah, you can do you can develop everything at the same time if you want. Now here's the uh, here's the the takeaway or the caveat mm. is that you're not gonna get much of everything right. if you do that. Your body it uh, it's got limited capacity to adapt, and many times one adaptation is takes away from another adaptation. For example, if I'm looking for maximum endurance. Maximum endurance, like let's say I'm doing long distance running, that requires my body to become very efficient with calories, to be very light, which also means not have much muscle. Now, if I'm doing that simultaneously with heavy strength training, which is telling my body to not be efficient with calories, right, to burn more calories, and to be strong, which requires more muscle, they, they tend to conflict. And so I'll get a little bit of each, but not a lot of either one. Muscle strength, muscle endurance, it, it, they're not as conflicting, but there's some a little bit of confliction going on. And so if you train for both at the same time, you'll get a little bit of both, but you won't get a lot of either. I love using the analogy. Justin, what do you call that? We we talked about this before on the show. I think this is, this, I think, paints the picture so well is, you know, the video game avatar, like, yeah. uh, attributes. Yeah, they, they, oh, give you, yeah. they give you 100 points, but mm -hmm. you have to, like, divide them up over, That's like, right. and speed, so, strength, yeah. skill, and, and like imagine, character skills. And, and let's just for a minute imagine or that attributes. everything that you do in as far as training inside the gym is going to give you one at least one bar of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the more specific you are at training for strength, the more bars it's going to go there and the less you're going to get of the other things, right? right? Yeah. And so it's kind of like that. So when you when you look at training, yeah, you can train for all of them, but you're only going to get maybe one more bar on each of them right. Right. versus focusing on one specific. It's totally like that. Yeah, it is totally like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I could totally visualize that. And I know anybody else who's played games like that where you're going through the characters, you're trying to pick the strengths, um, you know, you, their specificity does apply. And so if you're, you're taking away from, you know, another direction that you could take your body, um, you know, that's going to affect you, your overall performance. And so to, to try and combine everything together, you know, you could pull off like it, you know, like you could get some benefit in terms of like all of them, but it's going to be a lot less than you would just focusing completely on it. Yeah. And also we have to define muscle endurance because that's kind of a broad category, right? So so there's the type of muscle endurance that allows you to do 25 reps of a barbell squat. There's also the muscle endurance that allows you to do 20 sets in a workout. And then there's the muscle endurance that applies to like uh, more specific endurance type training where you're doing long distance running or rowing or swimming. So all of those are a little bit different, right? If you want the muscle endurance that allows you to do 20 reps in a squat, well, that it actually complements muscle strength to a certain extent, right? So mm -hmm. it's not going to be 
It's not entirely muscle strength, but if you're the average person trying to get build overall muscle, actually not a bad idea to do the low rep stuff with those types of reps uh, in your workouts. In fact, a lot of our workouts are designed that way where you go through different phases. Same thing with volume, right? Total volume is a form of, of muscle endurance. So for example, a bodybuilder tends to have more muscle endurance in that sense than a power lifter, right? A bodybuilder may do a bit shorter rest periods. They're doing more sets of different exercises. Oh, this is how I always used to crush Justin right yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, right. Back, yeah. In the day, yeah. back in the days when we used yeah. to work out yeah. together. Uh, about 40 minutes in, I'm going to Yeah, kill. well, I, I had the crazy muscle just, endurance because yeah, I trained that Yeah, you said that more of a motor. So it's like, yeah. yeah, you keep going through those reps and and then, you know, your recovery time was a lot shorter versus yeah. me where I was like constantly, like I would do the long rest periods and I was just adapted to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, you can get both, um, but you're not going to get a lot of either one. So just remember that. Now, there's no wrong answer here for somebody, right? So think about what you want. Think about the physical attributes you want. Think about the adaptations that you want. Now, for the average person who's not going to work out very much, does two, three days a week, wants to burn body fat, doing the most effective, efficient way possible, focus on strength. But if you're working out a lot and you're like, look, I like endurance, I like stamina, I also like strength, have fun, do them all. You'll be a jack of all trades, but a, a king in none. Well, I, I think there's there's one aspect too that you have to address is the, the psychological part about why I like focusing on one specific adaptation. Oh, the, men, the, the, the mental space is totally different. Yeah, the mental space is different. And then also the, the results and the gains in that direction come on faster because you're specific. Right. So, and, and we know that that's such a big piece to be people being consistent. Like if you decide you're going to write a program, you're going to be consistent about training, you want to see the most results from that, right? That keeps you motivated and keeps you coming back because you're seeing change. If you're kind of doing everything, you kind of see a little bit of change everywhere versus, okay, right now for the next four weeks, I'm going to focus on all strength mm -hmm. and everything from your dieting to your rest periods, to your exercise selection, to like your rep, rep range, everything is centered around that. Sure, you may not get a ton of muscle endurance from that, but you're going to see a lot of change in that direction of strength from focusing on that. And then the same goes for if you're going to go endurance-wise. So I do think that there's a, uh, even though you said that there's no wrong answer and you can do both, there is a, a, a psychological benefit also to being very specific to what you're trying to train because you'll get more of that Agreed. right away. Next question is from NP Deering. What exercises do you recommend to increase rotational power? Okay, so ro rotation, obviously twisting, right? And mm -hmm. power is speed. So the strength, strength is that low gear uh, type of movement, right? So like I'm grinding through a heavy squat or a deadlift, that's strength. Mm -hmm. Power is strength with speed. So this is uh, athleticism usually involves a lot of power. So training power with rotation means you're going to train, first of all, if you do train for power, make sure you you got good skill, good technique, right. and good stability. If you don't have any of those and then you go fast, you're going to probably hurt yourself. And, well, and I also think a big misconception with power is that, you know, you're you're also you're you're also trying to be super controlled on the eccentric part. And so, uh, you know, some of the best exercises for rotational power for me are where I, I take a, a medicine ball for instance, and I'm and I'm tossing it in in a rotational fashion and getting rid of it. So I, it's it's as much of my maximal effort as possible from the beginning to the end, and then I'm done, and then I'm recovering and composing myself. But um, for the most part, it's it's about that pure exertion. It's it's on command. It's it's you know being able to summon that force and then and then uh, display that power all at once. Yeah, now, I, what, like, what, I like bands for this, by the way. What 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 is your thoughts, Justin, on on and where does uh, anti rotational work contribute to rotational power and strength? Like, is that is that a, a, a must-have component to that or just as valuable in training that? If oh, yeah. No, I, I, honestly, I think that that's a little bit more in the strength uh, portion of, of the rotational strength uh, because you want to make sure that you have that kind of control. And so when you're going through these movements, you know how to you know find your way back to homeostasis, like find your balance and grounding um, so you can get more explosive. So you have to be able to build that foundation. So then, you know, when, you, when you're moving on the field, you're explosive, you can reorganize orient and find yourself and be able to stabilize. So you have to be able to slow down that rotation at the same time. Um, but when you're just working on pure power moves, um, I, I think, it, you know, with kettlebell swings or anything like that, getting rid of the kettlebell, I think is always a better option or slamming a ball, uh, it, you know, and then regrouping, composing, and then doing that same uh, type of movement again. So what, what I'm searching for is that I feel like, and I, and I think of something like a, even like a windmill, which is actually not rotational power as much as it is like rotational strength right? right 
But I think that that's important that we express that you want to have good rotational strength before you try and express the oh, yeah. power. Oh, yeah. So 100%. you need to really own and control the movement, doing things that like anti-rotational stuff, doing things like ro like windmills for rotational strength. So you have the ability to control in, in that plane really well. And then you can do things like medicine bell throws, wood mm -hmm. chops, things mm -hmm. that are more expressive to, to really... Yeah, you, you need to own... You need So strength contributes to this physical pursuit quite a bit, right? right? So if you just get stronger, you will increase your power um, somewhat, no matter what. No matter what you do, if you get stronger, you're going to get a little bit more powerful. Now, obviously, if you focus on power, you'll get a lot more powerful because power is a skill like anything else. But strength is the prerequisite, right? Yes. So don't go and do these fast rotational exercises if you're not strong in rotation because you're asking for trouble. Because when you apply speed, yeah. the risk goes through the roof in terms it's of injury. adding nitrous, you know, to the engine. It's it's something that you you know you have to really prepare the infrastructure to be right. able to handle it. And so I think that's where a misconception happens because it is like a lot of the, the exercises people think of are strength exercises. Um, like if I'm if on a cable and I'm doing a trunk rotation, I'm you know, the best form of that typically is to use it. So you do add the anti-rotational elements to that too. So I can slow down, be controlled. But when I'm just focusing on power, I'm ripping it. And then I'm, and, and then I'm composing myself again. Then I'm ripping it again. I love you use that example because I was actually just taking my client through that exact exercise. And one of the things I was trying to get her to understand, because when, when the client sees you do that movement and they just kind of look at the explosive part, but I'm trying to get her to uh, decelerate correctly, right? As, and and then stop in a controlled fashion and do that all with her core before we go back the other direction. And clients, they see the arms and that's what they're all, fo they're focused on like, oh, your arms go here and then you stop here. And then you can see, you could see her shoulders kind of shrug and, and yeah. move out of position because she's not locking it in from her core and stabilizing there first before she yeah, goes well, back. Well, when you have mm -hmm. a cable or a band, you have to bring it back, right? When you have a mm -hmm. ball, you mm -hmm. can let go. So right. that's why the control is important when you have something you're still holding on to because yes. if you just let go and let it swing you back, you're going to probably hurt yourself. By the way, if you are going to use something that's anchored, uh, I prefer a band for explosive rotational movements, way mm -hmm. over a cable. With a cable, you got the weight stack that's flopping all over the place. Yeah, it's, with a it's band, clunky. Yeah, with a band, it's you explode and then you can bring it back quickly, and it's not uh, as well, dangerous. Some of my favorite ones, and this is where I, you get all the Instagram type of exercises that actually make sense uh, for this, because you'll you'll get stuff like you know tire strikes you can do with uh, you know a sledgehammer uh, where you're getting really good uh, rotational explosive strength with your upper body and shoulders, and I can rotate. Slam it with all my might, and then basically, you know, I have to like redo that whole process all over again. I'm not dependent on bringing it back all under control. I can really exert a lot of so force. So let both you take me through this. Then, okay, let's pretend like we have a client who who uh, this person's asking for rotational power, but we're going to assume that they have v limited rotational strength. So give me, you know, one or two exercises. I would get them first to get the the uh, rotational strength first and the control, and then one or two exercises that I like that you guys like to teach people to the for the power aspect. Oh man, aspect. you you can keep it simple and do your regular cable chop to get strong, and then mm -hmm. eventually when they're stable and feel good, then you progress to a band and you go fast or a ball. So that's very simple. Right. You can get more complex. You could start with windmills and cable chops and then eventually move to uh, you know a ball where you're throwing it. Um, it's really about the progression, right? Mm -hmm. One is controlled. The other one is fast. Get good at the control first. Get good with the rotation of the strength first, then move to the speed. Yeah, and and, and just some other examples like a kettlebell halo, or even you do it with a with a um, dumbbell, and and you can go through that that pattern of rotation with your shoulders that a lot of times people just neglect. And so, just getting your body familiar with a lot of the function of your joints, with your shoulders, with your hips, and just getting that rotational uh, movement established and under control. Uh, you know that's another good one and then where does something like uh indian clubs and mace bells fit into this whole thing right so once you get once you get good fluid movement and, and rotation out of the shoulders that's where we start loading uh that that same swinging rotation and so now i can add that and i would start like very uh you know slowly with with one to two pound type of um you know indian clubs and then take that through those same rotational movements so you get your internal external rotation uh you go through that full range of motion um and then further on you can actually get a little more uh aggressive and, and fast with those swings too so they can become 
become more of you know a type of a power move. Now, would you put those kind of at the the peak of the progression here? So, like, I'm gonna get my you know basic control and strength first, and then I'm gonna do some band and cable type movements, and then then I've got really good control. I've got really good strength and mobility. Mm -hmm. Now I'm ready to do something more dynamic and right. a, a sure. little more fluid with something like a mace bell or yeah. like so Indian, Indian club, and then go to mace bell. I think yeah. mace bell is you know a bit of a jump uh, skill wise okay. yeah. from that, but I think it's it's super valuable uh, and something to consider that you can get bulletproof you could get strong in in rotational uh, elements of of you know your shoulders as well next question is from you gut to v cut can lack of scapular retraction prevent you from squatting deep oh all yeah. right well okay so if you're just gonna squat on your own without any weight maybe not oh, uh, the barbell load but if you put a load on yourself mm -hmm. then yeah you definitely need scapular retraction is your ability to pull your shoulders back and hold them there. And so when you've got that scapular retraction going on and then you squat, oftentimes the upper back wants to compensate and kind of roll uh, forward. By the way, when one part of the spine compensates, oftentimes you see it affect other parts of the mm -hmm. spine. So I know I said definitely with load, maybe not so much with load, but even without load, yeah. if parts of your back are starting to round, you'll start to see it in the lower back uh, as well. Having that neutral spine all the way up and all the way down really- uh, Well, if you're not addressing it, it's going to turn into uh, you know promoting it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's something you got to consider um, too. And it's very protective to have your shoulders retracted there, especially when you have load. So it has that uh, muscle contraction there, you know, protecting your spine. Uh, you, you know, down and plus two, then you get that forward leaning effect too. If you're not addressing that as well, where your shoulders are always already on their way forward, which then is promoting your body to go in that direction is something you're fighting uh, to sit back on. This was actually a, a massive cue that made a huge difference in my my squat technique. And I did not think it was going to be that big of a, a you difference. You were all focused on hips and ankles. Yeah, yeah. This actually helped me out a lot. And now looking at it and unpacking probably why, well, one, we all kind of have forward shoulders. But it does a couple other things really well, too. So you, you guys have seen me do that uh, little posture check where I have people stand and then your, your hands go up before, then you retract the shoulders, yeah. rotate, come down by your side. And then I used to tell clients like, okay, this is the anatomical position. This is ideally where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And then I would go, fill your stomach. And they, what happens when you put yourself in the, the anatomical position, like the most ideal stacking all the joints, in order to hold the spine in that position, what happens? The core draws and in. Mm -hmm. The core draws in and braces really well just to hold you in good posture. And so what I found was when I would get under the bar and I'd really wedge the bar down and, and focus on retracting and depressing the shoulders and locking in, it automatically drew my core in, elevated my chest up, which were important cues for a lot of people with coming out of the hole in a squat. You get down in, in a, a squat and at the very bottom, it's heavy and this is where the breakdown happens a lot of time. And if you already have excessive forward shoulders and your core is not tensed, and first thing you'll see is someone to round and fall forward a yeah. little bit. We tend to forget that our whole body's connected, right? So we think yeah. one thing doesn't affect right. another thing. Here's a test you could do at home, right? Go try to open a really, really tight jar and notice how every muscle in your body tenses up. So you're trying to do you're it with your arms. Not with your wrist and fingers. Yeah, it's your arm. It's both arms. Even, but your, even your jaw. Your face is yeah. tensing up. You're squeezing your legs and your glutes and your core because you're getting this kind of full body activation. By the way, that makes you stronger. Yeah. You're not going to be as strong. If I squeeze something as hard as I can, but with my whole body relaxed, I'm not going to be as strong as when I tense everything up. And this is natural. This is a natural thing that happens. So when one thing is off... If, if you're not trying to pay attention on keeping everything else a certain way, it'll automatically cause other things to happen in the rest of your body. And by the way, when you go to fatigue or when you're training under heavy load, the, it, the, your body's going to revert to it, what it does. And that is turn everything on. Everything's connected. Everything gets affected. I've been trying to, to think of an analogy for that, you know, for a while. But I, it, in terms of like, if if you think of the the, the squat rack, um, and, and in terms of it, uh, you know, being bolted down versus it being free standing, and you're putting pressure on it, you know, it's a much stronger when it's anchored. And so to that whole effect of you tensing your whole body, you're you're able to anchor yourself and ground yourself. Uh, so you're you're in a sense immovable, which makes you stronger. Yeah, and remember, you're seeing. CNS, it, it, it fires signals uh, in, in its specific areas, like to the bicep or to the shoulder, but it can't fire it as loudly as when it turns everything on. If it turns everything on, you get a louder mm -hmm. signal to in one area. That's why when you're trying to open the tight jar, everything tenses up because your CNS is like reserves. We need strength. We need power. Well, and back to their specific question of like, can this affect me squatting deep? Like, 
what'll what'll happen, you know, when you get into a really deep squat, it's it's pretty important unless you're doing a very low low bar uh, squat for the chest to be upright for the bar path. Even with the low bar, yeah, you I need know. to have a high chest. Right, right. Time. So even even, but it's a little, it's less than if you have a high bar, right? Because it's the bar path. If you are if you're coming forward and you have a hard time retracting and depressing the shoulders, and you roll forward and you get down in that squat, by the time you break ninety, that bar path is starting to to go over the the knees, and then you're going to feel the stress in the knees, and it's going to feel limiting. You won't be able to get ass to grass. So absolutely the ability to retract, depress the shoulders, keep the chest high, the core tight will make a big difference in your squat depth. Next question is from Coral Fit 6 As a new trainer, I'm struggling with getting my clients to express how the workout is affecting them. I usually get only short answers like good. I try to get them to elaborate, but it seems like they don't know how. Any suggestions? Yeah, you got to get specific That's with right. what That's you're right. asking. That's your job. So, yeah, what are your fitness goals? I want to get in better shape, right? Or, you know, okay, well, what does that mean? You know, a couple of things you could do. One is ask, how do you mean? It's it's actually more effective than saying, what do you mean? So if someone says, you know, how are your workouts affecting you? They're good. And you look at them and go, well, how do you mean? Sometimes I'll get them to elaborate, but oftentimes you need to be specific. Um, hey, how's your sleep? Uh, how is your energy? Are you noticing any differences in your energy? Is your mm -hmm. appetite any different? Are you noticing changes to your libido? Um, now that you're stronger in the gym, do you feel more stable outside of the gym when you're doing things at home? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you do that, people right. will go, oh, yeah. How I do your those. joints feel? Well, on, a, on a level of 1 to 10, where's your soreness? Yeah. Would you say you're a 10, you're really sore? Would you say you're not sore at all? Like yeah. Giving them the 1 to 10 thing for specific things I think is a really cool way because I understand where this question is coming from because clients don't, they don't know how to articulate that. Mm -hmm. it's, this is completely foreign to them. And it is really on you to ask a lot of the right questions. If you ask a vague question to somebody that knows very little about your field, of course, you're going to get a vague response. Here's your best yeah. example. This happens to every trainer who does a goal assessment, right? You'll ask a person, potential client, and you'll say, um, do you have any areas of pain on your body? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. If yeah. you leave it at that, there's your answer. Oh, do this. They'll it all say comes no. Comes on the workout. Though. Oh yeah, no. They say no. Go down the body. Okay. Um, do you have any issues with neck pain or stiffness? Do you? What about your shoulders? What about your upper? And here's what's going to end up happening. You'll go down. And be like, what about your shoulders? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. my left shoulder kind of bothers me. Like, okay, mm -hmm. left shoulder. Yeah, like, yeah. What about your low back? Your low back ever get tight? Well, yeah, it gets tight if I sit down for longer than thirty minutes. Okay, low back tightness. What about your knees? What about? And then next thing you know, it was like. Five different areas yeah, yeah. of pain. Well, I always have those conversations in the workouts, you know, in the, in the rest periods, because I would I would observe, and if I had to in the beginning, I would write notes. But you know, you'd see where the compensations happened, or where right. they shrugged the shoulders, or you know, if they're holding their wrist, or you know, if they 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 wince a bit more than than normal, or like you know, if they're breathing excessively, you know, and so those those are the types of things I pay attention to and see, uh, you know, how I can how I can address those by then bringing them up to their attention. And also, like revisiting that uh, later on. No, that's a great time to do that, and that's where those you know you have you have a client you know doing something as basic as a, a tricep push down on the cables, and you're asking them like you know where do you feel that, and, and not what muscle. Don't you ask them that because they don't know what you, you know what they say. Something, where do you feel my, it? my core? Yeah, <laughs> that's why you need to ask those questions. Yeah. You know where do you feel it? You know where do you feel? Or even more specific, where do you feel it at the bottom of the of the movement? Where do you feel it at the top of the movement? Do you feel anything in your shoulders when you do it? Mm -hmm. Do you notice anything in your core when you do it? Do you feel your your chest? Yeah. You're asking Can all these. Can you squeeze your chest right now? Do yeah. you feel that? Like, right, and so you're asking all these very specific questions to the movement they're performing at, and you're using layman's terms. Okay, you're not using all the things that you learned in your search. You feel this in your latissimus dorsi. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 funny My because, but you know, here's the deal: like, um, people are not aware of the benefits. This is true. The average person really isn't fully aware of the benefits of exercise and nutrition. In other words, they're not even aware that they're improving unless it's weight loss, right? So, if you if you ask someone, "How's your workout going?" Oh, I lost ten pounds. They know that. But if you say, hey, how's your workouts going, and they're getting better sleep, their skin looks better, they have more energy, they might not say, I don't know, I haven't lost any weight. I don't know how my workouts are going. People are literally not aware about all of these benefits because we've attached weight to it to exercise. That's it. That's the only thing that's important. They haven't attached right. anything else. But then when you get to specifics, I used to love doing this. Like, you know, hey, how's your workouts going? Oh, it's okay. I think I only lost a pound. Well, yeah, but how's your energy? And they'll think, and they'll be like, you know, now that you say it, man, I feel way better. It's like you have to reveal this 
to people because they don't understand. That's mm-hmm. such an important point. So we talk because we talk on the show all the time about that's a a, a major uh, part of being a really good coach is actually getting these clients to get away from the the mirror and the scale. Like that's their their two ways right now of measure, measuring their success. That's the only two ways. It is, and and they and they always think that way. And you're trying to get them to stop thinking that way and really make because that's what. You getting them to stop thinking about the scale and the way they look, no matter how much they say that that's all they care about, is is what's going to really determine whether you keep these people going forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because the the scale and the weight thing that that will go up and down and change, and that will make them motivated and not motivated. And if you're if you're relying on that motivation to keep them in the gym, they'll fail. But if you learn as a coach to as they're going through this process, start connecting it to their relationships, their energy, their attitude their sleep, their libido, all these other things. If you can learn to help them make the connection that, oh, wow. And here's the cool thing about it being a coach and a trainer that I'll tell you. Here's the here's the answer to the test. Guess what? When they're training and they're eating correctly, it improves all those fucking yep. things. Yeah. So you, it's kind of a rhetorical question, but you're helping them. You're getting them to say that. That's yep. what's important. You need, to, you need to get them to keep saying that. Like, oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. Since I actually increased my protein and increased my fiber, I do notice that my stomach feels better and I do notice I'm sleeping. You know what I'm saying? You need to, mm-hmm. as a coach, being very specific and getting them to say those things to make that connection. Yeah, remember, what you say can, can be true or false. What your client says is always true. So I could tell them all day long, exercise is going to give you so much energy and it's going to make you feel better, whatever. And they're going to be like, okay, that's fine, but I don't know. Is that true or not? But if I say, hey, how's your energy? And they go, huh. My energy is better. Boom, now it's true. Hey, how's your libido? You know, now that you said that, man, my wife and I have had a great time since I started working out. Boom, now it's true. Very important you do this as a coach. Look, if you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over there, check out all of our free guides um, on helping you build muscle, burn body fat, improve your mobility. We even have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. What the fitness people tried to say, or the way they explained it was, oh, past 6 p.m., you're not very active. So mm. any calories you eat past 6 p.m., you're more likely to store. If you eat it early yeah. in the day, you're active in the day, and you burn it off. And that's totally false. Here's what happens when you don't eat past 6 p.m. for most people. They reduce their calories. Right. Naturally. That's right. Naturally. 